All right, folks, what you see in front of you is the end of one of the machines I had out here in the garage. This is my old ice maker. It was given to me a couple of years back completely for free, and it had some wear and tear on it to begin with, but it finally gave up. So today I'm going to show you what I bought and why I bought it and why I think an ice maker is important for somebody who's interested in prepping. All right, so this is the new one. This is what's replacing it. Now, this thing does look humongous on the uh, description on Amazon. It is not. You know, you can see underneath there is the dorm-sized refrigerator, and there's a little chainsaw that I reviewed a while back. It is a it's very similar-looking commercial kind of ice maker, but it is not the same thing. You'll also notice there's a blue light going on in here. That blue light is for sanitizing the unit between uses. So it will turn on and off as it's needed. Okay. So let's get into this and why I think it's important as a prepper to have one. When I ask a lot of people why they're looking to buy a generator, most will say to keep their fridge going. But if you think about it, that generator requires gas, maintenance, fuel, all that other stuff, during a time where all those things could be in short supply to keep running. So it's kind of short-sighted to have a generator that just runs your fridge because it's a big investment for a very short-lived event. If you have a grid-down event that could last months or days or weeks, that's a lot of gas that you have to go out and hunt down or store, which isn't very safe to store it inside of your house. Um, it's a lot of maintenance on a generator. It's a lot of filling up. It's a whole lot of work. What would be easier? Well, I think it'd be a whole lot easier to make your own ice and have that ice inside of your freezers and refrigerators, keeping everything cool. And with something like this, you can almost do an unlimited supply of ice. This thing went on, only draws in the range of 114 to 120 watts. So you, those of you with the backup solar systems, those of you with power banks, with solar power stations, you're going to be able to run this. Puts out about 132 pounds in 24 hours. That's 132 pounds of ice, okay? You can produce ice with this high-efficiency compressor in here in about 8 to 15 minutes. That's 40 ice cubes per cycle. Um, I got this thing pretty full last night. We're going to try it out today and show you how it works as well. Um, I got it pretty full last night, and I was really impressed. That thing just worked on its own, didn't give me any headaches, set it, forgot it, walked out of here, came back, and I had ice in there. So the control panel is pretty easy to understand down there. It looks like a whole lot of buttons, and you'll see a 34 on there. That's how long it's going to run. And the temperature when you're not doing timer on it. You have your on and off button here. Okay. You have a timer indicator here. Your water, which is if the water is low. Now, I'm just using a, a two-gallon um, water bucket. You can get the five-gallon version for your, you know, your uh, water coolers and such. That'll work just fine. I'm just using a two-gallon one because it's very small. And However, this has been running. It ran last night for at least eight or nine hours. And there's still water in there. And the machine is full of water as well. You are going to need to understand how these work. So for your timers, you're going to go over here, set your timer. If you want this to go off and say, two hours, you're going to set your timer up or down using this. You have a de-icing phase and a cleaner, which is really nice. When I ran the cleaner last night, hit that button, all the ice came out, ran it through, cleaned the water, ran the light inside, that blue light inside, and that light does go up in here with the lights off, you can actually see it. And I uh, got it nice and clean, and I do have connected down here, and I'll show it to you in a minute later on, there is a drain tube you do need to connect to this. Now this has two ways to get water to it. This does not need to be connected to any commercial lines, it has two ways in order to get water. Let me bring you up close and show you how I did it. Now you remember I told you I just used the two-gallon container in here. Uh, this is just a two-gallon water jug. And you just flip it upside down like you would into a water cooler. It does spill a little bit, but if you're careful, you get it in there pretty good. Um, again, this is all stainless and all nice, so it's easy to clean up and wash up. So you can do that that way, or inside in here, and I'll show you that switch, you can turn a knob, and this can run off of any other water source, like your kitchen sink, a water hose outside, or anything. It comes with this kit here to connect it to all that. And you see a big filter in there. And that's your pre-filter. Your water filter, I mean. And that will connect to your kitchen sink, your water hose, your garden hose, whatever, and will be able to give you water. I just think for out here in the garage, I'm not going to run this in every time I need ice. Having a 5-gallon or 2-gallon little 
water bucket up there is perfectly fine. I assume you could probably just dump water in there until the unit is full. It will shut off when the power when the water is gone, and there will be a warning light on the bottom when the water is empty. So let me take you inside really quick and show you that little switch off valve. All right, if you look back here, you can see that blue little switch. This way, we'll leave it open for the uh, external water hose. This way, if I switch it back, gets it from the top where my two-gallon bucket is. So let's turn it on. I'll give you a look at how it works. We'll back up a little bit and uh, start up a cycle and see how it goes. Now, I do have a kilowatt on this, so I am t tracking the amount of electricity this uses. Right now, with the uh, ultraviolet lights on and everything, it's pulling about 120 watts. We are going to turn it on now. And you're going to hear the compressor kick on, and you'll see the water start to spill down there. What that does is that back metal container back there, that back metal kind of pods there, it's almost like a honeycomb or a hive, those get really cold. They start trapping water and freezing. When those become ice cubes, they fall forward. So, let me let this run for a little bit, and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when we actually start getting ice cubes. All right, so running it about an hour, I've got about half of it full of ice. I did have one piece of ice, that big chunk sitting there. Uh, it kind of propped up a little sideways. And when I went to uh, move it, because it was saying it was full, when I went to move it, it began making ice again, no problem. Um, so you do have to kind of keep an eye out for that. You know, if they come out in big blocks and kind of sit there. Now, um, it will not keep this ice from melting. It is very warm out here, even in this morning, it's very warm. So it won't keep this ice from melting. So you want to take that out and put it into something refrigerated right away, like a freezer or something. Uh, but all in all, I'm really impressed with it. I mean, it's been running for about, I would say, about an hour. And as you can tell, let me show you the top here. The bottle is about three-quarters empty. But it still keeps draining water down in there. So all in all, this is a real success here. I really like this. Um, I'm going to give you a quick look on the inside so you can see the actual machinations of the interior there and see how it works. So let me uh, move the camera and show you So that. this is kind of how it works. You've got the water flowing back there into those cube trays, and it slowly freezes and makes a cube, and when the cube is solid, it kicks it out forward. So that's the interior, that's how it's working. So all in all, this test has really proven that I really like this. I think it's awesome for emergency preparedness. Like I said in the beginning, it's the first thing I always saw people run and try to stock up on during some kind of power outage or disaster. There you go. There's a little bit of ice being thrown out. This is perfect timing. Let's see if we can catch it falling out. <laughs> kind of kicks it back there. But uh, like I said, during any kind of disaster or emergency or power outage, everybody runs for ice. If you can make your own with solar power and backup, you're doing really, really well. You don't have to worry about that. And plus, it's really handy to have to cool off as well, especially in this kind of heat we're having now. I can stick this into my swamp cooler and cool off and be ready to go. So I don't think it's going to pop out for us in time, although it is, it is leaning forward. That front piece has moved forward there. So maybe we'll get to see it. But uh, all in all, I'm really, really impressed with it. So I definitely think it's worth the money uh, to have something like this that's on a kind of a little more professional level than just a tabletop unit. It's definitely cool, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. So... Let me finish up. We'll finish up the video. I'll show you what it looks like after I clean everything up and get it filled up and ready for another run later. And I uh, will talk to you in a minute. One thing I did want to do is give you a quick example, and there you go. It just fell out. One thing I want to do is give you a quick example of what it's going to look like. And you can see this, the process starting up again. These are going to be your ice cubes. Now, again, it's really hot out here. These are melting in my hand. But, easy enough to smash them up, break them up, and you got individual cubes. So, very impressive. Now, let's finish up the video. I did want to show you how the cubes look before I uh, finish up. All right, so I'm showing you here with the kilowatt on here. We've got 293 watts right now with the compressor running and ice being made. So you can see that's not bad. An average 500 watt power bank would easily charge that. Or a solar backup power system like I have in my garage. And over here, you'll see that little hose back there that runs out okay, into that little coffee can. That's your runoff. That's your drain. Um, you'll probably need to dump that every, I don't know, five, six hours. Um, of course, you can get a bigger can. I just used that old coffee can because it was in here, and I planned on planting stuff in it, so that's what we used. <laughs> so we got it just sitting there resting now. We're all done. I put the ice in the freezer. Uh, I'm going to be saving that ice just for the heck of it because I made it. Um, it's over in my, my freezer on the other side of the room there. So why did I choose this one? This isn't cheap. This is not a cheap unit. This is $460. 
The reason I choose it, I chose it is because I, if I need ice in an emergency, I know I can count on this thing to make good, clean ice as quickly as possible. Like I said, this high-efficiency compressor can produce ice within 8 to 15 minutes, depending on the size you choose on the up or down buttons. Nice high-density foam layer inside will keep it cold. It is not a refrigerated unit, but it will keep it cold. If you keep that door closed, it was easily 98 degrees in here when I was doing it before when we showed you the ice. Um, it's probably about the same now, and uh, it kept it nice and cold, no problem. You have a one-function button there, one-button cleaning system. So you hit the de-icing first when you're done, if there's ice still in there and you want to shut it off, and then you hit the cleaning button. It will drop out the ice, clean it up, and it will make it nice and clean and ready for the next uh, load. You can leave water in it, so that's no problem. The capacity of the whole unit, this Anvil unit, is 26 pounds. It's recommended to store them in the refrigerator, of course, because it is in a refrigerated unit. During the ice making process, if the water level drops, you'll see that little, there's a water red LED across the LEDs there. That will flash. That will turn on a solid, I'm sorry. While it's filling, when you first put that water jug on, it's going to flash saying, okay, I'm filling up. And then when it's done, it will turn off. It takes a while. It'll take about half that, it takes about a gallon to fill it up. So while it's doing that, it will do that. When it gets full, the ice full button, the light there, will flash. And like I said, that's 26 pounds. Mind you, just take out the ice cubes, you'll be good to go. Now, here's the most important part. When you're setting this up in your house, okay, two things. First of all, it's going to come wrapped in a horrifying blue plastic. <laughs> it took forever to get that blue plastic off. That's really not a uh, negative. They do it to protect the product so it doesn't get scratched up because it is stainless steel. But man, it took a long time to get all that stuff off. And there's still little pieces you can be able to see. Um, and also, too, you're going to want to let this sit for 24 hours. You're going to want the compressor to settle, um, sit where it's going to be installed for 24 hours before you turn this on. I had this sit for two days straight before I turned it on. That's pretty much it. It's very simple to use. It's uh, 13 inches, 13.9 inches by 16.9 inches by 25.1 inches tall. And the weight on it without water is 53.9 pounds. So it's not a super light unit, but it's definitely going to be more reliable than the one I got for free that uh, just recently died on me. And I'm really liking it. I'm going to give you a quick look around and show you what it looks like up close and personal and show you the accessories. Uh, anybody that's ever worked in a restaurant knows full well you never put glass in there, so they give you a nice plastic scoop for your ice. And this actually works very, very well. Nice thick plastic. Again, I showed you the filter. If you want to connect this to a hose or to your kitchen sink or bathroom sink or whatever, you can do that. And a decent set of instructions. They're actually very understandable. Nice instruction manual. It will come packed in a box. You know, it's a big industrial shipping kind of box with uh, tons of styrofoam in it. So get ready to unpack it. Um, you'll probably want to do that with the help of a friend. I yanked it out on my own, but you know I could have done damage to it by flipping it upside down. So all in all, you'll uh, probably want to help of a friend when you're unpacking it. It's not that it's super huge or heavy. It's just that it's kind of awkward. You know, it's awkward size and weight for one person. Anyway, let me give you a look around here really quick and show you what it looks like all the way around. So you see the depth of it? You can kind of see. You've got vents all the way around it. Um, I was concerned about the distance I am to the wall, but it's really perfectly fine. Nothing back there gets hot. All of your heat and stuff is vented out these sides and front. There are two huge fans in front here that will run when the compressor is running. And over here, you have more vents. And that's the unit itself. And like I said, this is the cap that goes down there. If you're going to be using another, source, another water source other than this you know, five gallon or two gallon container. It will take a five gallon container, no issues. I just opted for that because it's smaller and easier to manipulate for the video. And it'll probably be what I use permanently in it, you know, once I fill it up with water. I am using filtered water in this. We have very uh, hard water out here in the desert. You get a lot of calcium in it, so I don't want to mess up the unit. But uh, all in all, I'm very pleased with it. And like I said, it's not cheap. But if you need ice and you need it reliably, this will do it. And believe me, I've been running this thing a lot since I got it. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with it. And you saw the ice. You know, it, it kicks out a good deal of ice in a uh, short period of time. So all in all, very impressive. And by the way, I did misspeak when I started up. When the blue lights were on in here, like they are now, it does not draw 120 um, watts. It draws 1.4 watts or 1.3 watts. I had it on bolts, not watts. So... Definitely cool little system. 
Um, they do tell you to keep it unplugged if you're not using it, and I will be doing that when it's not in use. But uh, for now, I'm going to be making it a little bit more ice just to test it out and ring out the ring out the system a little bit and see how I like it. Um, so far, it's been flawless and super easy to use. No complicated instructions. You literally plug it in, fill it with water, hit your on and off button, choose the side of ice cube you want, and run it. That's it. That's simple. Anyway, folks, I will put a link down below. I know this is kind of a bigger expensive prep, and I know some people will be like, oh, you're really, you know, you focus on affordable stuff. Why are you showing us this? Well, there are affordable ice makers out there, and the whole idea was to get you thinking about it. This is just my personal preference, and I really like this unit. I'm very pleased with it. Um, you could buy a cheaper one. It may work, it may not, but this is my personal preference, and I really, really enjoy it. Now, if you guys remember, the reason I looked at Anvil is because I noticed they had a ton of ice makers and the ultrasonic cleaner we reviewed that I got to clean my firearms. So it was just a natural progression. I'm like, yeah, I remember that. Let's go check them out. And sure enough, they had this one here. So check it out. There's a link down below where you can look at it on Amazon. Um, you can also check out all our other links as well as our Amazon affiliate store, our My Patriot Supply Store, which is preparewithiridium.com. That's preparewithiridium.com. Our store down there for my freeze-dried wholesalers. Okay, you click that link, you save 15%. All you got to do is click the link to save it. The, the prices will be automatically discounted. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link as well down there. You can get yourself set up with some really good freeze-dried food. Um, I think this is an important prep for people. I think ice making is a really cool kind of almost prepper superpower in a disaster. I always remember people run into the store at the last minute during hurricanes and stuff trying to buy ice to keep their stuff cold. So definitely a cool little thing. And again, don't run out and buy something like this if you don't have all your preps in place. This is a nice prep to have after all your stuff, your food, your water, and all your other stuff is ready. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.